mysterious archaic hominins arrived in the Philippines as early as 700,000 years ago. The discovery of butchered rhino fossils has pushed back human arrival on the islands, and changed the story of human migration. But scientists still don't know what human species did the butchering. Nor is it clear how the mystery people reached Luzon Island. There is growing evidence that ancient human species reached remote islands, sparking fierce debate over whether they did so intentionally using watercraft, or by accident. Did these archaics meet modern humans in the Philippines? The biggest of big picture questions is whether archaic hominins in Flores and Luzon and Sulawesi persisted for long enough to come face to face with modern humans, who migrated into this area around 70,000 years ago. But the biggest archaeological prize would be to find a link between the early inhabitants of Luzon Island and the enigmatic hobbits, which lived on the island of Flores over 2,000 kilometers to the south. If you just look at a map, it seems obvious that the ancestors of Homo floresiensis arrived on Flores by island hopping from Java. This entails crossing a handful of straits, each just a few tens of kilometers wide. But some of the currents are treacherous, so crossing without boats is difficult. Instead, some researchers think the ancestors of the hobbits arrived on Flores by drifting from northerly islands, like Sulawesi and the Philippines. This would have meant crossing wider expanses of water, but the prevailing currents in the region flow from north to south. The stone tools and butchered rhino are the oldest evidence that ancient humans occupied those northern islands, strengthening the idea. So, it seems likely that Homo floresiensis, or its ancestor, got to Flores from the Philippines or Sulawesi. The hominin presence in the Philippines about 700,000 years ago is indeed potentially a first step towards solving the mystery of the origin of the Flores hobbits. This exciting find suggests that early hominins were more widespread than previously thought in Wallacea, the vast network of islands located east of continental Southeast Asia. Stone tools and bones from a butchered rhinoceros date to 709,000 years ago, hundreds of thousands of years before modern humans evolved. The fossils and stone tools were found in a clay bed, dated to between 777,000 and 631,000 years ago. This date was reached by combining several dating methods, confirming that the butchering of the rhino took place around 709,000 years ago. The finds change our understanding of hominin colonization of the Philippines, and raises questions about what species of human made it to lose on that long ago, and how they traversed the ocean but it also contributes to an increasingly complex picture of human migration. The original story for human evolution was very basic, which theorized maybe there was one single migration into places like Southeast Asia. But it's becoming so much more complicated. Until this find the only strong evidence of hominin occupation came from a foot bone found in nearby Kalao Cave on Luzon, which was dated to 67,000 years ago and attributed to a mysterious ancient human that is known as Homo luzonensis. Archaeologists also found 57 stone tools including 49 sharp-edged flakes and 6 cores, and 2 possible hammer stones. The rhino skeleton had cut marks on 13 of its bones and both of its humerus bones were cracked open, giving hunters access to its marrow. There were other animal remains as well, including deer, a turtle, a monitor lizard and a stegodont an elephant relative with a weird sideways trunk. So if modern humans didn't cut up the rhinoceros, who did? It was likely Homo erectus, the first hominin believed to have ventured out of Africa. The human species was common in Asia by that time and had four potential routes into the Philippines. But recent studies also suggest the ancestor of Homo floresiensis could have beat Homo erectus to the area. It's also possible the rhino was butchered by some as yet undiscovered human species. The human species responsible for the butchery remained speculative since the researchers found no hominin fossil evidence, and many human species created the type of tools found in the region. The latest find also raises the possibility that even older evidence of ancient human activity exists on the island. However, until the discovery of Homo floresiensis in 2003, 
Claims of the presence of archaic hominins on Wallacean Island were hypothetical, owing to the absence of fossils and stone artifacts that were excavated from well-documented stratigraphic contexts, or because secure numerical dating methods of these sites were lacking. As a consequence, these claims were generally treated with skepticism. Indeed, the most recent recoveries in Flores and Sulawesi Island provide a unique documentation of overseas hominin dispersal, during the early Middle Pleistocene epoch. It was most likely that these early humans spread through island Southeast Asia from north to south, with Luzon as one of the stepping stones, following the ocean currents south and eventually reaching Flores to give rise to the ancestral population that led to Homo floresiensis, say the researchers. The hypothesis is that Homo floresiensis ancestors came from the north, rather than traveling eastward through Java and Bali. But interestingly, the oldest human fossils, dated to 700,000 years ago on Flores Island, were found to be 20% smaller than more recent Homo floresiensis fossils. More on this important detail at the end of the video. Until recently, it was believed Luzon and the other islands of Wallacea, the islands east of the Wallace Line, separated from the rest of Asia and Australia by deep water, could not have been reached by pre-modern hominins, as it was assumed they didn't have boats. Islands west of the Wallace Line were joined to the mainland when sea levels were lower. But the discovery of Homo floresiensis and more recent discoveries on neighboring Sulawesi show that hominins were in Wallacea from very early on. Recently uncovered evidence shows the ancestors of Homo floresiensis were on Flores by 700,000 years ago, around the same time hominins were present on Luzon. The dispersal of fauna through the Wallacean Islands also supports the theory of hominin colonization from the north. If you look at the fossil and recent faunas you see that there is an impoverishment as you go from north to south. On Luzon you find fossils of stegodons, elephants, giant rats, rhino, deer, large reptiles and a type of water buffalo. On Sulawesi, the fossil fauna is already impoverished, there's no evidence of rhinos or deer ever entering there. Then on Flores, you only had stegodons, komodo dragons, humans and giant rats, that's all. More importantly, just how did hominins get to Luzon Island? The archaeological team concluded that hominins of some kind had established a presence in the northern Philippines during the Middle Pleistocene epoch. And that they must have come originally from Borneo to the southwest or Taiwan to the north, and that they could potentially have used boats. If animals did reach these islands by chance, by entering the sea and following the current south, then you would expect the further south you go the fewer species you would find, and that's exactly what we see. While it's possible, that the first human colonizers of the Philippines were able to construct simple rafts, the research team believes they more likely arrived by accident. Most anthropologists believe they may have been caught in a tsunami and carried out to sea. Those kinds of freak, random events are probably responsible for these movements of humans and animals. This region is tectonically active, so tsunamis are common and there are big events every hundred years or so. Most scientists are be reluctant to accept the idea of archaic hominins paddling to remote islands in purpose-built watercraft, even very rudimentary ones. This is not to say that such a scenario is impossible. But if they had boats then we would already have evidence that archaic hominins got to more remote parts of the region, including Australia. Therefore, it is more likely that rare events are the mechanism behind hominin populations taking root on oceanic islands near Asia like Flores, Sulawesi, and Luzon. The oldest stone tools on Flores Island date back at least 1 million years. The earliest hominin fossils from this island are 700,000 years old, and belong to a hobbit-like population that may be directly ancestral to Homo floresiensis. The Luzon Island find is important to the Hobbit story because it now looks like the northern part of Wallacea was the source of origin for the hominin population that first reached Flores, via Sulawesi, on the southern fringes of Wallacea. Indeed, the Flores fossils suggest that hominins cut off on this Wallacean island survived for hundreds of millennia, and underwent unexpected evolutionary changes, including shrinking dramatically in both body and brain size. 
it is possible a similar story of hominins evolving in genetic isolation took place in Luzon. But, the Luzon environments are distinct from those of Flores, so we can't easily predict the outcome of a new evolutionary experiment with different parameters on that island. Nonetheless, there may be some real surprises in store when a hominin fossil record is available on Luzon. Even more remarkably, the 700,000-year-old fossil find on Flores shows the hobbit's ancestors were even smaller. Two hypotheses account for the evolutionary origin of Homo floresiensis. The first is that hobbits descend from Homo erectus, aka Java man, an archaic Asian hominin roughly similar in stature to modern humans. A small population of Homo erectus, it is thought, got marooned on Flores and shrunk in body size. The second hypothesis is that the ancestor of Homo floresiensis was an even more ancient hominin, that was small to begin with. The candidates include Homo habilis or an Australopithecine, both known only from the fossil record of Africa. Flores Island, at that time, comprised a tropical savanna drained by numerous small stream channels. These grasslands teemed with pygmy stegodont, an extinct Asian elephant, Komodo dragons and giant rats. The fossil beds accumulated between 1.3 million to 500,000 years ago. Hominin fossils comprising six teeth and a fragment from a lower jaw were discovered there. The fossils represent the remains of at least three individual hominins, one adult and two young children, and date to around 700,000 years ago. The sandstone containing these fossils was deposited at least 700,000 years ago, which is 10 times older than the Homo floresiensis skeleton. The hominin is much smaller in size than Homo erectus from Java, but the teeth and jaw fragment do not resemble any earlier hominin species. In fact, their closest affinity is with Homo floresiensis. No one predicted that the ancestor of the hobbit would itself have looked like a hobbit. Although these hominins are remarkably hobbit-like, the jaw fragment is from an adult that was 21% smaller in size than the tiniest hobbit. More importantly, the lower molar has five cusps instead of four, unlike the hobbits, in which the fifth cusp is reduced, and most resembles those of Homo erectus in shape, but much smaller. In sum, it now appears that these castaways dwarfed in size soon after making landfall on Flores, or another island such as Sulawesi or Luzon. But Indonesia and the Philippines are full of big surprises. Until we find more complete hominin remains, or even older fossil sites, we cannot be certain about the identity of the hobbit's ancestor and thus how this evolutionary saga began.